الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحب في الله from the adab or manners of the salaf al-salaf al-salih ridwan Allahi alayhim comes a beautiful narration on al-ahnaf bin Qais rahimahu Allah ta'ala in which he said stay away from mentioning women and food in our gatherings. For I hate a man to constantly describe his private parts and his stomach. It is an aspect of higher conduct and religiosity that a man sometimes leaves eating food while he desires it. And this is from Abu Bakr Ad-Dainuri in his book Al-Mujalisa wa Jawahir Al-Ilm. Ahabatifillah, I think this narration is clear for us. It shows us how the Salaf did not indulge, not in just, not only in, in just vain speech, but speech about two things which many of the people love to indulge in. And speech about two things which is in, in relation to our inclinations and our desires, and that is the women, and that is food. How many people in this life, they indulge in the food. They want to indulge in every, and they cannot restrain, and they don't know how to restrain, and this is why we see, one of the reasons why we see obesity on the rise around the world, around the world. The other type of indulgence, ahabatifillah, and this is what we have to remind ourselves, because some of us don't have a problem with food, but we might have a problem with the opposite sex. As men, the inclination is towards the women. So it is easy to, every time you gather together, and you find this often, and this is shortcomings of us, uh, of, of some of the brothers from Ahl Sunnah, you find that one of the first things when we get together, it's about the beautiful women here, the beautiful women there. Oh, I was almost married here. Oh, I was thinking of marrying from this country. Oh, there's a sister who wants to marry. That everything is revolved uh, in all the conversation is, of, is around the women. And this is why the Prophet والسلام, said, in the dunya halawat al when Allah subhanahu mustakhlifukum fi or halawatu khudra when Allah mustakhlifukum fi fa yanzur kayfa ta'malun fa taqu dunya wa taqu nisa fa inna awla fitna bani israel kana fi nisa the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the dunya is like a beautiful garden under this is a beautiful garden this is so beautiful and green the mountain if you could only see these white caps and the clouds, the white caps of snow, frosted to a certain level. Absolutely beautiful, the air, everything. It's so much to indulge in. Not in a negative way, this can be a reminder. But you can also overindulge as well. In the dunya, halawa, or halwata, khadara. Verily the dunya, it is a, this life is a, it's like a beautiful garden. It's a beautiful, it's, it's beautiful. It has so many things to distract us and, and everything. And verily, Allah establishes you therein, meaning in this life. This is the life that we're living. This is a life where we're fully 100% aware of, although for the believer, they believe in Al-Barzakh and they believe in Jannah wa Nar and Yom Al-Qiyamah, have a many men. But what we see in our senses, smell and taste is right here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes you therein. And He looks to see what you will do. Are you going to do halal? Are you going to do haram? Are you going to do the good? Are you going to do the bad? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَتَقُوا الدُّنْيَا فَتَقُوا nisa. He said, so fear the dunya. Fear this life. Doesn't mean you should stay in your house, you're scared. No. But it means fear over indulging in it. Allowing it to be a source of distraction from the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَتَقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَتَقُوا nisa and fear the women. Does that mean we're afraid of women, that we should not marry women? And that we sh No, it just means we take the halal path, that we should marry the women. That we should have lawful relations and not, over, and not overindulge and let that be something that 
that consumes our hearts so that we, we can't even no longer tell the halal from the haram no longer uh, uh, do we indulge in halal because we're busy with haram because that can destroy you it can consume you and then the Prophet said, Israel He said, Verily, the first fitna, the first trial that befell the children of Israel, it was the women. They were tested with the women. Because that's your inclination, that's your fitra. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from any and all kinds of fitna. The fitna that is seen and the fitna that is that is uh, unseen and, and, and not clear for us. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم